Can we cuss in this? Hello and yes. welcome to We Should Be oh, Friends. Oh, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Assuming we're recording. Hi, my name is Carter Monier. I am the uh, founder and publisher, like head publisher of Disquette Press. Um, we are doing like a round table conversation today with uh, four people, including myself, who are heavily involved in Disquette Press. Um, if we can go around and introduce ourselves, starting with Casey. Hello, I'm Casey Nowak. I have three Ignatz Awards. <laughs> um, and I, um, I, I don't know really, I, I'm kind of like an office manager slash disquette enthusiast. Casey gets really mad when things are untidy. Yeah. And honestly, that's helpful. Right, yes. yes. I, I organize stuff out of anger and spite, and it's so efficient. Um, um, all right, uh, Renee. Hi, I'm Renee Kimry. I'm Disquette's print technician. Mm -hmm. My grubby little hands have been on basically everything that Disquette has ever published. Um, yeah. I'm the one who presses the buttons on the horrible machines to make yes. the comics come out and then cuts them badly. <laughs> and then Emma? I'm Emma Jane. I kind of help Disquette sometimes, but mostly they give me money to print my books. Yeah, you're here as kind of the the representative of, of our artists. Um, our featured artists. I chose uh, this panel um, because I wanted to talk uh, to the people in Ann Arbor who are like most heavily involved with the sket. I should say there are two people who are heavily involved with the sket who are not currently here. One of them is my spouse, EJ, um, who is literally laying flooring in the new studio while we're having this <laughs> discussion. So. I, I think... thought you were going to say laying on the floor over there at this very <laughs> No, I thought she was going to say that too, and I'm in the room. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they're, they're laying flooring. Um, so they are heavily involved in, in Disquette. And then the other one God is uh, Judah, Judah Perillo, my partner, who uh, has worked shirtlessly late into the night many times it is... to finish cutting like hundreds and hundreds of stacks of comics yeah it's the very like classic disquette scene of like casey woke up really early and wandered out into the living room and there's jude diligently cutting comics with no shirt on <laughs> already at the request of no one <laughs> i appreciate it so much it's like, really nice we all just I... want to do stuff for carta it's really weird <laughs> it's, it's so helpful that jude is like strong yeah. Actually strong people exist, which is great because I was hired because I could lift 20 pounds and then I became chronically ill and <laughs> might not be able to lift 20 pounds as consistently. Yeah, no, I mean, same. Like, like, I'm glad that that's not a metric of owning <laughs> a small yeah. press. <laughs> I'm um, strong. I'm pretty strong. Yeah, Casey's pretty strong. Um, so uh, the, like, sub title of this panel, um, I, I called it, like, Disquette Press Ann Arbor Trans Printing Club, um, because That's a notable perfect. feature of Disquette Press is that all of the people in this panel, and then most of the people we publish, and also mm -hmm. the two people who I mentioned who are not on this panel, um, are trans. Mm -hmm. uh, we are like a company run by and for trans people. Mm -hmm. um, it was on my contract. Least. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It, we contract? required you to, to become trans in order yeah, to I... participate in this <clears throat> kit. <clears throat> um, Wait, I don't have a contract and I actually get paid. Well, <laughs> okay, it's it's the fags only clause and you don't because hey. just <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Cause no comment. <laughs> it's like can you lift twenty pounds also? How limp are your wrists? <laughs> Terribly. How much does your bedroom resemble Dracula's bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's very. <laughs> yeah, if Dracula really was into Nintendo, yeah. like really into Nintendo, that's Emma. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's <laughs> my room. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, we need to clarify that it is not Emma's birthday. It is not Emma's birthday, but that is a, a banner that we printed. Yeah, that's an example of our fine work. <laughs> <laughs> the worst machine we own. Um, so I guess we the might noisiest. as well uh, talk a little bit about 
the things that like I'm assuming people want to know about a small press. So yeah. like there's a couple big things we can talk about. One is like the you know how like in old issues of Batman, like the original issues of Batman, there was always like a little panel that said who he is and how he came to be. <laughs> so we can do that. We could do who we are and how we came to be. And then um It's always kind of it's always kind of Sorry, go on. And then, uh, illustration. Yeah. And then, uh, we can also talk about our studio move because that's like the big thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Spoiler alert during COVID, we've printed nothing. Like, we've <clears throat> done nothing. We have not been able to do anything. This we've, Get Press LLC has basically been. We've packed lots of orders. We've packed lots of orders, but we have not created right. any new. Like, the Resograph has not run except for, uh, <laughs> yeah. Except for um, <laughs> um, a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> a couple of times in um, uh, promotional videos. I love this very accessible panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, no everyone knows what we're referring to. Um, they'll figure it out as we go along. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the I'm genesis sure. of Disket Press. Um, yeah. Let's ask the room a question. <laughs> Did you ever think you were going to be involved in the operation of a small press, Casey? Uh, yeah, because we were friends and you wanted that really badly. And then I got divorced and I moved in with you. And then one day you woke me from slumber <laughs> <laughs> to let me know that you were buying a Resograph machine and nine drums. For the insanely low price of, should like, I say it? Yeah. Like $250? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was that cheap? Anybody yeah. who knows or like buys Resograph drums is just screaming right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like, it was an absurdly good, I feel like people either get resos, they're like, I paid $3,000 for this, mm -hmm. or they're like, I got this for free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I- The church in my neighborhood burned down and I found it. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. In the basement. And um, I'm more on the for free side side like mm -hmm. I've told the story so many times I feel like everyone in the world knows it mm -hmm. but a print shop that I use or used to use run by these two sweet older ladies called me after I hadn't been there for like over a year <laughs> the last like when I had seen them last I had not yet transitioned so they <laughs> called me asking for my old name and thankfully I, I still like I wasn't like no goodbye you know I was <laughs> like well you know what are you calling for and they were like, do you want to buy this Resograph machine and all the drums? Like, we just want it out of here. And you then know? you woke me up. Well, then I woke up Casey. Which is worth it. That was fine. That um, was good. Yeah, so we, we stumbled into owning a GR3770-3770 mm -hmm. Resograph machine, um, which is quite a, quite a nice machine. The thing that I always love to tell people, um, and I brag about this all the time. It's very like exploitative of our relationship. I'm always like, here's an amazing Carden Winier story. <laughs> um, but the the fact that when we got the Resograph, it could only operate like as a copier. Mm -hmm. So anything we wanted to print, we would have to first print like on a laser jet, and then like if we were getting content from the internet or from right. the computer. Um, and you had to install some complicated thing. And um, I don't know how you did it. Um, <laughs> it was expensive. It was, you know, you, have you ever seen the inside of a computer? One of those things? The green things? A circuit board. Yes. You had to put <laughs> one of those <laughs> into into the printer and you got it to print off a computer but everything was coming out at one quarter size yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> and like god it was like so close you got so close and then like you i don't know when you solved that problem it was also like a guess wasn't it, was, it? yeah it was so exciting i mean <laughs> it was so exciting yeah i'm not gonna dig Go ahead, Ray. I remember that like the driver software that we were using in a while was in Japanese because yeah. we couldn't find English. I um, mean, the, uh, the thing very is, exciting. Like, the printer is from 1998. It's like top of the line 1998 print equipment, mm. and so like that was before. Like this is essentially like a you know it's a different type of like copy machine. I mean that's a whole different and world. like and like those things didn't come with the ability to connect them to a computer at that time like that was like a really expensive extra feature so like 
not only did I have to find and install that, but I had to find like support materials from 1998 um, and drivers and things. And like, the thing about Resograph is that there's a good community of people who also are sort of banging their heads against the same wall. <laughs> and through digging and like asking in enough places, you can generally puzzle together a solution. Um, but yeah, uh, back to the, the question, Re, did you think that you would ever be involved in a small press? So I, no, no, I, I moved to Ann Arbor um, and, you know, met you, became friends. And not too long into that relationship, you acquired the Resograph and were like, hey, Re, while you're hanging out, want to help me, like, figure this printer out? And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I do all sorts of weird things for friends. Um, and now I work <laughs> for you. Yeah. Which is... Wasn't even the plan when I was doing... Like, I had no idea this was about to happen. No. Um, and, like, the transition between this being helping a friend with, like, this this interesting hobby and learning about this, like, bizarre old machine... Um, to this is now a job that I do, or did, and will right. do again, <laughs> um, was... A lot of assumptions. Yeah, a lot of... <laughs> sorry. Do you know something I don't? <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't I'm get sorry. that contract I haven't you seen you in so long, I have to get it all in. <laughs> <laughs> While I've got you here. <laughs> sorry. Um... Yeah, so I I had no idea this would be happening. I'm, it's I mean everything about everything about this is such a like bizarre series of coincidences because like mm -hmm. I only know Carta because shortly before I moved here, she was like I don't have enough trans friends and googled the phrase or searched Twitter for the phrase Ann Arbor trans and found my wife, and that's how I know Carta. If she hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met any of you. And we all love your wife, Ann Arbor Trans. Yeah. <laughs> She's beautiful. Yeah, we love local uh, transgender women. <laughs> I believe this more this, thank you for tuning into our panel where we mostly make jokes that are only funny to like four people. <laughs> no, this Mine was more accessible. No, it was just yeah. kind of a dad joke. Emma yeah. Emma's good with accessibility. I yeah. think we all know that. Um, you can you know because her work is award-winning. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've only won, like, one and a half Ignatzes, so I'm half the person you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emma, did you think that you would be, I mean, like, not so much, like, involved in the operation of a small press, but working so intimately with a small press? <laughs> it wasn't specific. Okay, what, what's that for? <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm really sorry. Okay. You paid a face Behave, though. Casey. Okay. So it wasn't specifically on my mind, no, but um, it's not really surprising, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess for context, uh, Card and I went to college together. Um, and while we were there, actually shortly before I even got there, um, she started a small student-run um, comics publication. And that's how I met her. And eventually, I was an editor for that publication for a while. And yeah, I've just kind of been making comics ever since. And surprise, I moved to the same city where Carter was living, and she wanted to start a print shop. Uh -huh. And guess what is really cool when you want to print your work? And also, it costs money to print your work. <laughs> you get your friend with this ancient machine <laughs> to belch out your works at a low cost. Yeah. Very evocative. It's very, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing, the thing that I'm learning, like, I keep bumping into people who do, like, letterpress printing, and there it's like, Ooh. my machine from 1998 might as well be, like, from the future, because mm -hmm. they're all using machines that haven't changed since, like, the 1700s, you know? <laughs> they're all, like, chunk, you know? It's, like, all cast iron, and, like, like, there's some intricate mechanism, and all the parts are, like, stamped, and, like, all the machines are from, like, the 30s at the most recent. Yeah, you probably have to oil everything yeah, once right. a month. And, like, all those people are, like, like grizzled and you know like they're <laughs> strong and then there's me and I'm like 
you know, like, oh, I have a, I have a little Gatorade machine. Yeah, me. would someone open a Gatorade for me? <laughs> um, I used to think you were so hardcore because, like, I sat next to you while you tried to install an ancient laser jet printer driver on an emulated copy of the <laughs> Windows 95 OS running on like a Windows Vista laptop or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how the dot matrix printer works is like, I, dot have, matrix one. I have like an emulated version of like, like a, one of the first like Mac uh, desktop systems after the Apple II, like one of the first ones with, with like a mouse that you can move around in Windows and stuff. It, is, did it come with all those? No, I had to. I had to make the cable. Well, what about the graphic? Oh, you made. Oh, right. I remember you making that cable. I had to make the cable with help yeah. from a friend, and then yeah. yeah, it's it's a pain. <laughs> but it's preloaded with all these graphics, like the pumpkin and the. Oh yeah, so I downloaded a a, a software package <laughs> that back in the day must have cost a lot of money. That's like for making greeting cards and shit. So this is just some of what Disquette is capable yeah. of. I mean, like, to answer my own question, I I did not think that I would be running a print shop. I really wanted to find a print shop in the area that did reso, because running a small business is hard, <laughs> and I don't, like, the actual running of a small business is my least favorite part of <laughs> it, you know? Like, if I could pay someone to handle everything that's not, like, just the printing and whatever like royalties and things, spreadsheets. I don't, I went to school for art. You know, <laughs> I, I don't actually have a big interest in it. Um, I have an accountant now who is like a good accountant and like that's something. <laughs> um, after my first accountant who was <laughs> a literal con artist who was like, I, I, I am an accountant and like had an office and then like took all my banking information and disappeared. <laughs> That was crazy. This is what happens when you run a small business and you yeah. don't know shit and yeah. you're just like wandering around office buildings be like, are you an accountant? <laughs> I need one. Yeah. My Why yes, young lady, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Can we turn this into concrete advice? Like there's, there's verifications you can do for like someone being a real accountant, right? So, I mean, the thing is, I got recommended this accountant by another small business. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. why I got, like, I did not wander into it. I, like, a person who runs a tattoo shop in the area who I like and trust was like, you should use my accountant, Jeff. That'll I, teach you to take advice from, <laughs> from anyone from ever. Anyone. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure, you know, if he's good enough for, like, these guys are doing great. Um, so, yeah, I, bad luck. Um... <laughs> I guess like a clue might have been that every time I emailed him over a period of several months and I was like, do you need me to give you information about what I'm buying? Or he would be like, I'm, I'm handling it behind the scenes through looking at your bank statements. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's probably how an accountant works. That's not how an accountant works. <laughs> They don't sort of magically you, suck up all your information. Yeah, but if someone was like, no, you don't have to gather that information and send it to me by email, I would be like, okay. I would <laughs> yeah, no, so that's, that's the thing. I was like, oh, I'd be so fine. Oh, thank God. What that. a good accountant yeah. this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would kind of not care. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the first piece of concrete <clears throat> advice we've given on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. In, here's, like other businesses. Yeah, here's a good piece of concrete advice. Don't start a small business. <laughs> like, oh. I think back to when I was in college and I was running this co student comics publication, I emailed Annie Koyama. This was probably in like 2011. So, like, I didn't she know didn't this. Know, yeah, she didn't know me or anything. I was not established in comics in any way. Um, but I emailed Annie Koyama and I was like, hi, I run a student comics publication and I want to continue doing some sort of publishing after college. Do you have any advice? And she sent back like a long, really, really long, super kind email that basically was like, don't, <laughs> do not. <laughs> she was like, only do this if you're ready to like bleed money. Um, and like, she was right. Like, it's good advice. Like, I love it. I do love 
printing comics. I love having the ability to do printing and like print experiments and things, but like it is not a profitable endeavor. Like it, it's fun and like I'm glad I'm doing it so that my friends can benefit in the way that I secretly wanted to when no one else in this area was doing it. You know? <laughs> um, but like, oh thank God! Like it's you know it's just a it's a lot of work and like it's it's a lot of boring work that isn't necessarily you know like if being a cartoonist is like you know like honking a clown nose and dancing around and you know <laughs> just having a lot of fun, which it's not, but let's say it is for a second running the business part is like like someone shows up and is like you need to fill out a big spreadsheet before you can honk that clown nose again <laughs> <laughs> you like that metaphor everybody it's, like that it is so perfect it is so <laughs> perfect it is exactly how i think of my work oh my yeah, god yeah when i need to think of a I, verb that i would liken drawing to it's always honking yeah honking <laughs> just gotta honk the tablet arm. Honk the tablet to make the tunes come out. Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, so right now, Disket is based out of our living room, which during a pandemic doesn't work because all of us are working from home and there's mm -hmm. no, no room to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and also, we, we now own substantially more machines than could fit in this apartment. Like, maybe if we, like, gave up the entire living room, but even then, it would be tough. Yeah, um, even then. I mean, you like your bedroom, right? I mean, you could so stay in there always. I mean, that's already what I'm doing. Originally, that's where I had the risograph. I had it yeah. in our bedroom. That I was seems like, insane now. I was like, this makes sense. Do you remember the first, the shelves you bought? The first shelves? <laughs> Those tiny <laughs> the shoe shelves. With the yeah. plastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, it's a learning process. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're moving to a new space. Um, we're moving to, <laughs> I got really lucky. I went on next door. Um, which is Facebook for your racist, racist, <laughs> racist relatives. And that's Facebook. Um, I went down next door and asked oh, about, goodness. yeah, I asked about um, if anyone had like an insulated garage or a studio space. Got a couple leads, went and checked out this one space. First space I checked out, owned by a local trans guy who I'd never met before. Super friendly. He was like, Oh, you're a trans business? Yeah, that's wonderful. I was like, sometimes we publish pornography. Is that okay? And he was like, yeah, that's wonderful. So like, <laughs> all of my fears were like totally negated. Um, so yeah, we're we're moving into this. It's like, I would call it like medium good for what we do space. Like, uh, that's part of why flooring is going down right now. The concrete is cracked and uneven, so it wouldn't be great for machines. So we are laying down a ton of like rubber flooring um, and then uh, we'll have to go in and like figure out something for like a fan, something like I bought a big dehumidifier. Um, but it's insulated, it's big, it's bigger than our, mm -hmm. our living room. It's like a, a one and a half car garage. It's like a one car garage with like a workbench area. Um, and honestly, like any space is going to be better than a <clears throat> third of a living room that we currently have. Yes, yes, I I agree. Yeah, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be really. I'm so excited. We have these new machines that I've never even gotten to to use. Oh, they're so <laughs> like, scary. Like a big mechanical electric paper cutter. We have a second I'm copy so machine for the new paper cutter. Yeah. I'm so excited for that. We have like a book binding, like perfect binding machine oh, that I haven't even what? gotten to take out of the box. <laughs> Could any yeah, of these machines... I, Sorry. I'm like the the studio move is going to open up a lot of a lot of options that we've been like talking about forever. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that just has been really limited in in terms of printing is, I mean, we are, you know, between two and four people um, with like a copier, a big stapler, and an <laughs> old studio team. Right. Um, so we we can make we can staple books we can i think we have stuff to do like chicago screws or whatever yeah we can spiral bind and we can yeah we have bind. a spiral binder which is another like two extra machines that have to live somewhere um it's it's 
it's surprisingly easy to print something and much harder to turn it into a book. Yeah. Um, and that's having, having the space for this really, I think is going to open up a lot of options for stuff that we can do. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to publish larger things because we don't have to take over your living room with stacks of paper and little postal mail organizers <laughs> I'm so um, excited. on the floor. I'm uh, so that excited. is something that I was going to ask, like, is um, having the capacity to perfect bind going to increase the, like, size of books that we can make? Theoretically, I mean, perfect binding, it, when we're perfect binding, the limitation is basically going to be, like, the, the amount of space that the machine has to, like, squeeze, mm -hmm. you know, a book together. But it can get pretty thick, like, you know, thicker than we would reasonably print. I don't think this guy is going to reso print, you know, a 300 page book. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Right. Um, would be really unless sludgy. it's like 300 pages of the same thing, you know, like if we, there, yeah, but like uh, for collating reasons, like it would be, it would be unreasonable. It would be a bit of a nightmare. But we also have a collating machine that like, I'm so fucking mm -hmm. excited to use, like, that we haven't even gotten to play with at all. All of the stuff has been sitting in the storage unit because there's no room in our living room. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember we came back from Cala or maybe SPX and I was like, okay, the thing is like our bottleneck is very much at the paper cutter. Um, yes. Like we only have one and it's hard to use and like you need upper body strength and I was like so we should think about getting a new paper cutter and I swear to god like two hours later you were like well I just bought one on Craigslist and I'm gonna drive to Cleveland to go get it <laughs> and I was like uh, all right today is good <laughs> like, I didn't mean today but that's nice <laughs> yeah it's I mean like the thing about print equipment like if you do if you're watching this and you do want to start your own operation like there are especially in the Midwest. I don't, I don't have experience with this on the coasts, but like in the Midwest, there's a lot of small print studios that go way back. And there's a lot of equipment just kind of floating around a lot of home businesses and a lot mm -hmm. of people with like studios and big, you know, big buildings or whatever. Um, and people are always upgrading. People are always like, you know, like taking on bigger projects so they need a bigger machine and they're getting rid of their smaller machine which is how we got the the big paper cutter mm. um the people we bought it from had upgraded to like an even bigger paper cutter which is cool you know i'm happy for them but like this thing is bigger than we're ever going to reasonably use uh -huh. um but yeah like craigslist facebook marketplace are super useful and then there's like all of these auction sites that i haven't even messed with like a uh, special printer specific auction sites for like very very specific equipment but like that tends to be more expensive than we uh go for but yeah and it's for... oh. oh go ahead Ray. and for a lot of this equipment um like because if it's there's sort of a um a, a sweet spot in terms of age where like if if it's a mostly mechanical thing like a paper cutter or like our paper jogger, which is I think my favorite machine we we have, because um, it's just a paper <laughs> oh, with an industrial strength vibrator on it. Um, um, can you can you describe for the people what a paper jogger is? Yeah, so it's I mean it, it, it's this it's a it's a rectangular paper tray with a motor attached to it, uh, and it just jiggles paper. It used to be really important when reams of paper were compressed differently than they are now. Um, but it's really helpful for if you, for example, have to operate an extremely finicky um, uh, copy machine from the late 90s that has, <laughs> um, whose ink never quite dries properly and therefore has problems with static cling and uh, pulling in multiple sheets at once. So it's really helpful for that. Um, yeah, so jiggling the like, sheets in that scenario is a lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And this is ancient um, and it, it has exactly one moving part. Um, and it was built for a problem that doesn't exist anymore unless you're doing weird things like we are, um, and it works perfectly. And our yeah. paper cutter is also really old. <clears throat> yeah, the jogger is from the 50s. Yeah. The paper cutter, I don't know, the paper cutter is definitely newer. I would be surprised if it was from any earlier than the 90s, but it's like oh, okay. a model that's been made for, oh, okay. for a while. Uh, yeah, because like, 
a lot of this stuff, um, like a lot of the stuff that you can use is technology that's been around and like older things are not any way worse. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Like the collating machine that we just bought is from the 60s or 70s. Um, and I know this because I looked for a manual and only found like the cover of a manual. And it's like this really groovy girl in like a mini dress, like oh, leaning hell, against yeah. it. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> Um, you know, sexy girls and collating. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, think one, you when think you have the, the collating next... machine, you I have mean... more time to make love to a sexy girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's what you're after. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, okay, so the secret of running a print studio is to, like, overload yourself with work and then buy a bunch of machines that do the work for you so that you can fuck again. Yes. You know, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> I mean, like, now we that have, you're strong we have so many machines that are going to do so much for us, and I'm, I'm really excited. Like, I guess the, the, like, sweet spot that, like, we're learning to hit is, like, it's, it's easy to print the pages required for, you know, 500 copies of a you know 24 page zine or whatever that's mm -hmm. not hard but then like what is hard is like organizing those pages and collating them and stapling them and whatever with efficiency in a way that doesn't like take fucking forever right and, and like we've refined our methods a lot we used to fold every page individually and now I went to a, like a, a workshop where like multiple people said I never do more than one fold and like that honestly is like a lifesaver to just fold all the pages together and sort of hope for the best. Well we had a paper folder that we enjoyed using. We had a paper folder. I mean we still do. It's great but it also eats the paper. Yeah. A lot. It yeah it's um it's it's extremely <clears throat> finicky. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean it's so much faster than folding each individual page by hand, but so yes. is folding each book exactly once. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's been so, it's like been so difficult being in this little apartment because like there's no central air uh, and uh, there's just like not a lot of surface area. No. Um, which leads to kind of like festival crunch, you know, we're like in the kitchen and the the kitchen tables all folded out with like several different scenes being collated at once and then I don't know, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like we've had fun with it and also having a dedicated space is going to be so amazing. Mhm. Mm yeah. Just yeah. so amazing. And um something nice that's happened too is that like to meet other people who do printing in this area like I had a really nice conversation with a, a couple that runs a print shop in Detroit they also do reso but they do like letterpress and stuff too and they were really excited about the idea of like skill trade mm. they were like if we need a zine we'll get you to do it but if you need letterpress or they have a machine that um basically creates like uh tear off notepads like it, it binds it so that you can glue the pages but then there it's like that special glue so that you can just tear off a mm -hmm. page at a time they were like if you ever want to make those we can make those for you they're super easy so like oh, that would be i'm so really cool. excited about like the the potential that we have for like different types of collaboration once we have a dedicated yeah. space that's not Something. our house oh. yeah go ahead emma uh something that i think would also be kind of interesting to talk about, and I guess it's more of a Carter question, is um, what is, I don't know if I want to say, but your fascination with older printing methods? Because, I mean, part of it is practical, and the Razor F machine was cheap, but you also have kind of a thing with old technology in general, mm -hmm. and Actually, I don't think even I know what draws you to it so much. <laughs> it's a, that's a fun question. Um, I think part of it is definitely the cost. I mean, part of why I love the risograph that we have is that when I was seven slash eight years old, it was the most expensive, best printer you could buy. 
and now I have one in my house, you know? Like, there's something <laughs> about that that feels really cool to me, mm -hmm. just that, like, within my own lifetime, and not even, I'm 30, you know, like, not that, <laughs> I'm not that old, um, but, like, within my lifetime, like, this thing that would have been, like, the don't even touch it, like, it's so expensive mm -hmm. kind of machine has become this, like, plaything for me as an artist is like something you're willing really... to slap a cool dog sticker on yeah um casey is laughing because i have shot pornography where i have sex with the reason <laughs> so that's sorry. that's the that's the joke I'm okay sorry. we're addressing um, the elephant in the room okay <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she said plaything and i just i couldn't i mean it, that's playful. Um, yeah, i was in like professional panel Absolutely. mode so my brain didn't go there casey um oh, oh mine with, with it so come on <laughs> i i guess like the the thing that draws me to old technology too is that like a lot of older technology is like very specific use designed like um the game boy camera and printer is made for like kids to take photo booth style pictures of themselves and like trade them between each other and like the the dot matrix printer is made for people to you know, like it's home printing. You can print like a greeting card or a banner or a letter or something on it. Did you ever print those greeting cards that you would fold and pour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Um, and so- I like, miss Pokemon Print Studio. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, it feels fun to me to like take this thing that like, <clears throat> is sort of like, it's past its usefulness. There's better printers. There's easier printers. There's like higher resolution. There's better repos cameras yeah there's better resos whatever and like push it in a way that it was not really designed to go um like the dot matrix printer i have is the image raider 2 it was like for early apple computers and the reason i bought it is that like some group of internet weirdos made a company in china to create a new run of four color dot matrix ribbons um, because it had like four color dot matrix printing functionality back in the like late 80s and like that's weird <laughs> and like all of those ribbons have dried out and like are essentially unusable now and so like these people made new ones and I was like well that's fun you know like I can print like weird point to list images on this dot matrix printer and like that also like gives me a lot of ideas for like weird you know art applications mm -hmm. um yeah there's just something about it that feels really really fun it also like i like old zines i like old magazines and like ephemera especially like gay um zines and like gay pornography one of my favorite maybe my favorite fetish magazine ever printed is this like jockstrap fetish magazine from the 80s called Jockey Club. And it was like the text was printed and then formatted using a dot matrix printer, like very clearly. Mm -hmm. And it looks really cheap, like really specific and weird and cheap. And like it's fun to me to have the same kind of tool and be like, I could make Jockey Club, you know, like I can make that <laughs> if I want to. <laughs> You know, most people would look well, at I'll Jockey be. Club and not see the technique behind the jockey strap. <laughs> jockey strap? What the hell? That's jockey the, strap. You know what I yeah. mean. That's the thing that's so weird about, um, especially as someone who <laughs> has never been, I've, I'm not a comics artist. Um, I'm like... Uh, Thank you for acknowledging um, that. <laughs> unlike Carta or Casey, um, I have, comics aren't wow. my life. Um... <laughs> All right. Sorry, Emma, you just don't run the scat in the same way, like. <laughs> okay, wow. I'm learning a lot about my role in the organization today and my life. It's fine. <laughs> um, what I mean to say is, uh, so I, I never read much in terms of comics. I, not at all as a kid and not much as a younger adult. Um, and really sort of got into into them after, I mean, after moving here and meeting Carter and Emma and Casey in particular. Um, and it's been really interesting getting into comics from, mostly from the production 
end of it because you do start to see printed material completely differently. You start to look at the way comics are produced in a really interesting way. And like, I think a lot of people have nostalgia for the sort of Scott Pilgrim sort of, um, uh, uh, I don't actually know the word, but the, the, the little comics dots effect. Um, oh, sure. Halftones. Uh, from like, the yeah, the, the sort of C-U-M-Y-K halftones. Um, and it's it's interesting getting to approach that from a sort of different but also really uniquely strange sort of halftone perspective like the way I, I look at Restograph halftones literally for a living now I suppose um and like the the weirdness of this one bit printer is just I don't know it's it's a really interesting lens to look at all of this sort of printed stuff from yeah it's true and I mean like in terms of like pushing old technology in ways it's not supposed to go, like the Riso is like a, you know, it's common for art and art comics now, but like its use case was like, if you are a secretary or a teacher or you are like printing a church bulletin and you need to print like 50 of the same thing quickly, it's for that, you know? It's for like mm -hmm. quick sort of sloppy, like, here's this thing you know like it it looks nice but it's not made for multicolor printing like it was not sure designed with the idea that like you would run the same paper through multiple times <clears throat> with multiple colors of ink um and so we are sort of like faking a uh you know like this fancier print process using a tool that was like intended for much more basic applications um, which is cool. Like it's it's neat. Yeah, we're cool. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think most would agree. Yeah, yeah, most would. Yeah, I mean... most people who would bother to watch this panel probably agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, Disquette Press, the darlings of the indie comic scene. I will watch this thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't believe you took those words verbatim from the average person's brain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tapped in. I know. Um, I guess uh, before we close up, we should talk a little bit about like who and what we print. Oh, fuck. Um, oh, because yeah. we've, talked, um, we've talked a lot about like the logistics of printing. Uh, okay. Who, do you want to talk about who we... I've talked a lot. Do you want to talk? <laughs> You're the moderator. All right. Uh, who uh, fuck i know i'm i'm bad at this I, I see you could start with yourself <laughs> oh yes uh acclaimed cartoonist and crossword clue casey nowak is a <laughs> dis disquette press artist <laughs> but um i mean we print some of the best talent i think currently working in the indie comic scene including people like Emma, I suppose, Count, Marjulia, um, Sunmi. Yeah. Sunmi does a lot of work with us and is brilliant. Ivy, obviously, mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. Ivy Adams, incredible book, emotional support animal. Yeah. We have many copies. Go buy one. We sort of print like uh, mostly trans artists. Mm -hmm. um, largely like if not trans then queer artists yeah, and just mm -hmm. interesting work yeah i mean not to like yeah our own <laughs> horn. also i don't usually pick the work so i'm allowed to say i guess it's just like interesting and intimate and honestly stuff that you won't find in a lot of other places yeah and like i think our our print quality is good um there are people who do way fancier things than we will ever be able to do like um if you want some really 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 fancy reso printing done you go to like perfectly acceptable or um you know another another place like that or some european place or whatever but like or you know resolve or issue, any of those places yeah. issue press is that issue press yeah is that in grand rapids that's in grand yeah. rapids um <clears throat> but like I feel very proud of the quality of the stuff that we print. Like, I think we print beautiful books, and I think that we print books that we want 
you know, like we print the stuff we want to read. We yes. print the stuff that we want to to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, you have amazing taste. Thank you. So <laughs> that is sort of really important. <laughs> In my opinion, like, I feel like if Annie had one other option besides don't do that at all, I feel like she'd be like, taste is important. I don't know. Yeah. Um, thankfully, trans people are so good at making comics. It's true. <laughs> um, one, of, one of my favorite There's things that we printed um, has actually been not comics. It was um, Empty Casings by Mira? Myra? I actually never yeah, learned. Mira Pitch. Uh, Pitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mira Pitch, um, which is this sort of chapbook, I suppose, of, of poetry and um, maybe an essay and yeah, like short um, fiction. Yeah. Yeah, short fiction and uh, a few photography, a few like photo stills. And it's, it's gorgeous. And I mean, I'm a, I think the Risograph, the Risograph, I guess, was literally made to print text and not images in the same way. So it, it text looks really nice on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, I think it's our largest book in terms of thickness or page count, at least. I think napkin might um, be. Oh, yeah, napkin's oh, yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, um, Empty Casings is, it's such a beautiful book. That really is, is a book that I'm deeply proud of in terms of design and like yeah the quality uh, yeah risograph text is so gorgeous because it doesn't have you know like the pixelation that you would get with the digital printing it's just like ink on paper it's so satisfying and it's also like riso ink as casey mentioned earlier never completely dries so there's always a smudgy quality to riso which i quite like like if you want Mm -hmm. really sharp perfect if you wanted to make business cards like letterpress is the way to go because it just comes out and it's like permanent and beautiful and pretty sharp and you know like but mm-hmm. like with the reset there's always this kind of like smudginess if you push your thumb down on it and like smudge it the ink will move mm. and like when you hold a book like the ink moves around a little it's it's cool like it feels really, it's really alive and like the um the print version we did of Erica Price's Disorder, um, mm-hmm. the research print version, which I think is only in the U.S. There's a I think a more conventional printing in the U.K. Yes. Um, it's this really really dense, really really heavily inked black and white um horror comic, um, and because you can't turn the page without smudging it a little bit, there's something really incredible about just like what that physical object becomes because Risograph is so weird. Yeah, it's wild that like we can make books that will like literally leave <clears throat> ink on your hands. <laughs> like I remember um years and years ago to me the name Chris McKay was synonymous with Risograph printing mm-hmm. and I had her um comic commuter. Yeah. I destroyed that book. <laughs> with my sweaty hands it is just disgusting now it just you can't tell what it is I just smudged it to death which is good yeah it's proof it's proof that i <laughs> it's, i enjoy, it's your I, copy of I commuter enjoy, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ever, no no mistaking it <laughs> uh old sweaty hands uh. yeah it's working with riso is fun there's also like it makes it really easy to go from like an idea to an executed book like that's how my weird little game boy books happen Mm. that would have been really difficult to do if i had to like take that stuff to a print shop because like it was like very specific Mm -hmm. and strange Mm -hmm. you know um it just it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of experimentation i think a lot about the cover of napkin and how well it reproduced like the material quality of like the actual sleeve Mm -hmm. It just, I love it. It's so lovely. Yeah. And what you said, like, just reminded me, bringing it back to um, kind of the question of the actual content of the stuff we print. Um, something that has just been unbelievably great about working with this guy is that I want to make work uh, about trans people, specifically about trans things. And just going to a random publisher with that is such a Mm crapshoot. Like, there's no guarantee they will understand any of this crap. Um, It's just nice to have a group of people who are able to produce this book who, like, get it. Mm -hmm. 
and also like I don't ever feel like I have to compromise with the stuff that I make. It's super important. I mean, like we're a small operation and we can't pay very much, you know, like we, we pay as much as we possibly can, but we can't offer like good advances or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like the, I want there to be that benefit of like, if you want to push some boundaries and if you want to make some hard work or experimental work or like, you know, painful work or, or whatever, mm -hmm. you have the ability to do that without some editor coming in and going like, I think you could tone that down a bit, <clears throat> you know? Have you, have you heard of What's muffing? <laughs> <laughs> What's muffing? Can someone tell me what this muffin thing is? <laughs> I'm almost too embarrassed to ask. Why am I yelling? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Carta, do you want to talk a bit about, um, I know the, the way that Discat sort of handles royalties and stuff um, and the amount that we pay out is something that's been very important to you through this. Is that something you want to talk about in terms of like um, for talking to people who might be interested in starting a small press or potential artists or yeah, I mean, like, currently we pay out uh, 50% um, of all sales. Uh, so it's not like after recouped cost, it's just like period. Um, if we sell a book for $10, the artist gets $5. When we originally started, we paid 60%. And doing that calculation, eventually I was like, okay, we are like actively losing money and we will not be able to continue at this rate. So it became 50%. Um, you know, as someone who's been on both sides of it, it's important to me to acknowledge that, like, without the artist, these books would never happen. You know, like, publishers take a risk, and, like, it's a lot of work to publish and print mm -hmm. books. But at the same time, like, the artist is the important thing. You know, people come for the artist. People are excited about the work because of the artist. And, like, the artist is doing the work that, like, takes longest and is emotionally hardest and, and all of that. And it's important to acknowledge... Um, you know, like figuring out royalties and things, it's a balance that like I feel not very good at as someone who's not a business person, you know, I've, I've sort of been thrown into the business side. A lot of people who run other small presses have told me like what you're doing is not sustainable and it might not be. Um, and like at some point I might need to seriously reevaluate like the way that we handle royalties. But for right now, you know, like as long as as long as we're able to keep going forward, I don't mind putting some of my own money into Discat to, you know, keep it going the way that it, the way that it is, because I really like it. You know, like I, I like being able to say like, we pay better than other small publishers do. And, you know, like we really respect the work, you know, like that's just what I would want as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's what I want as an artist. like. I'm so glad that when I have to talk about money stuff, it's like with my friends and it's very trans, like transparent and straightforward and not having to worry about weird predatory payment practices. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really important to me to be very transparent and like, you know, like I am fully, fully ready to have made a mistake, you know, like um, <laughs> I, I keep saying it, I did not go to school for math, you know, like I, I did not, oh, sorry. Uh, I did not go to school for business. Like, um, I'm doing my best. And so like, I want to be super transparent <laughs> because when mistakes eventually do happen and I'm sure they will, I want it to be clear that it's not out of some grand embezzling. Just ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, yes, we're not like a certain our, account. We need our right. ignorance documented. Right. I mean, like, what <laughs> so far, I, I am proud to say that, like, we have been able to pay all of our royalties on time um, and in full. And, like, some of that has been because of the generous assistance of people outside of Disket, like, donating um, money, especially during early COVID. Like, Disket bled a whole bunch of money because we yeah. were anticipating going to shows and then no shows happened. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a couple very generous donations to help us cover um, royalty payments. But, 
you know, like overall we've been able to to pay our artists and like as long as we're able to do that and like sort of you know that i'm able to pay renee what she's owed on time um which i very much appreciate yeah no it's important to me you know like it's we're treating it like a job and like for tax purposes it's like a it's a it is a job it is a job it's on my back is like a normal job right Um, like you know i i just want to be very careful with it as much as I can be and like who knows maybe in the future cross my fingers I can pay someone to handle this side of things you know the accountant is a big help it would be cool if someday we have like a proper business manager who does (laughs) the royalties and like the the day-to-day like yeah uh, financial operations and things but like for now you know it's a passion project and and we're all doing our very best on it um, I think that that basically wraps up the time that we have. Um, do, let's go around and plug things real quick before we go. Um, so uh, you can find my work at cardamoneer.com. Um, Disquette is disquettepress.com. And on Twitter, it's... Noturfs.online. Yeah, or noturfs.online. That's another way to get to our website. Um, on Twitter, it's at disquettepress or at cardamoneer. Um, Casey... Oh, um, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Casey Nowak, and I'm on, um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Ignatz Hatterack, if you, I, if you want to try spelling that, it's, it's all right if you don't find me, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Renee? Um, you can find me on Twitter if you want to make bad decisions, at one of the bad ones. Um, <laughs> seriously, it's not a great Twitter. Um, and I mostly just want to plug, I'm, I'm really excited that Discut's going to be able to get back to work and we're going to be putting out some really cool stuff soon. Um, so I, it's a little awkward having this panel after six months of sort of silence on our end, but um, <laughs> yeah. some cool stuff is coming and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Um, Emma? Uh, yeah, you can find my stuff at Emma hyphen Jane. J-A-Y-N-E, because I named myself the hard way, um, <laughs> hyphen comics.com. And on Twitter, what the hell is it? Oh, it's Emma underscore Jane underscore one up, because I'm a dork. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's oh, true. I didn't know that. You can also find me at OnlyFans.com slash Carta. Um, <laughs> You can see the reason graph featured yeah. there if you want to know more about it. <laughs> if you want to know more <laughs> about, about, it. about the, the important operations of our day-to-day print shop. Yes. Um, Honestly, I, I'm i very proud of those videos. They're funny as hell. They're, <laughs> They're great. So good. It's, um, it's this culmination of a joke that's been going on for like almost two years now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said this on Twitter, but I am now using my porn career to fund my comics hobby which is which makes me the exact opposite of Chester Brown (laughs) (laughs) and thank god thank god for that (laughs) um all right so thank you everyone for watching our panel um this has been lovely thanks for attending virtual SPX um (laughs) And uh, no one here is up for an Ignatz this year, so. I'm, I'm going to present them. Maybe. Yeah, well, don't vote for any of us. Don't, That yeah. would be a mistake. Yeah. No, you um, could vote for me, that's fine. Yeah, you could still vote for Casey. I Casey doesn't have another. enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm also presenting, but I don't have a big head, so don't vote for me. Okay, good. Uh, okay. <laughs>